Sports and this is the Unfiltered Podcast, episode three. Um, we are proudly sponsored by Hez Hez Boxing Equipment. And today I am joined by my new co-host and ex-professional fighter, Francis Crows. He's had 35 fights in total. He's boxed ex-British champion Mark Leach, um, British champion Jay Harris, world title challenger Jamie Conlon and world champion Paul Butler. He's been on the circuit for many years. He's been retired for a good few years now, but uh, he's uh, hosting this podcast with me. How are you doing, Francis? You okay, bud? I'm good, mate. Thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, do you know what I do? Well, you did miss out on there, mate. Is um, one opponent who I don't think gets enough credit is Kevin Satchel from Liverpool. <laughs> He was right, a British okay. Commonwealth, a European champion, that's the same as the same as he won. I think he's the first or only the second one to ever do from Liverpool. Yeah, to be fair, that's that's just me getting the uh, the most notable names off, off your record, to be fair. No, no, I'm not completely understand that. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go back to the beginning with you. Your upbringing, your family and stuff like that, and uh, what led you to boxing? How, how old was you when you got into boxing and stuff like that? I, when I got into boxing, I was around about eight years old. Um my big brother did it before me. I, I, I looked up to him growing up. He, he was a good right. amateur. Um, but, like, I, I was born with epilepsy and um, premature and growth problems. So I was I'd like, I used to have, like, made up to 20 epileptic fits a day, really. I wasn't meant to, like, I wasn't allowed to watch TV for longer than two hours. The doctor Bloody told hell. my mum that I'd never be able to do a contact spot in my life or live, like, a, like, a life as a normal kid. Now I use that as like motivation for me to like, no, nah, I'm not yeah. someone tell me what type of life I can live. Yeah, you were having that, you was determined, were you? I wasn't having me, not a chance. I think that's why I used to fight the way I did, because like, I'd prefer war, do you know what I mean? Because that's what, like, yeah. been a war all my life. Yeah, too right, I love that. Um, yeah, so you was eight years old when you got into boxing, so tell you, your brother was an amateur, so t- t- tell us about the inspiration behind that with your brother and stuff, and, well, and what, what, what was it like when you first walked into that boxing gym? My big brother, um, he had open heart surgery when he was four year old. Bloody so hell. he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have been able to, like have a boxing life really himself. And he he got a few national finals. He's a, he was a good amateur. Mate. He boxed um, Jamie Conlon in the boys club final. Oh, I'm not nice Jamie Conlon. Sorry, Jamie Cox in the boys club final. Oh right, okay, nice. It was it was the year that Jamie Cox stopped every single one in the competition. Wow. It was a, that was a, um, but yeah, he boxed Jamie Cox in the farm. He beat a good few kids as well. And he was just because uh, so my dad went to prison for drug day when I was about, I'd have been about, I was in primary school, so I'd have been about, yeah, I'd have been probably about 10 year old or something, mate. Yeah. He got 16 years for drug day. And um, so basically, I looked up with my brother, he looked after me like because I was, I'm mixed race myself, I'm half Indian Asian. And right. like growing up, me, I was a little scrawny kid, I looked like, like, I looked like I needed a wash, not with my skin colour and that. <laughs> and I, I was just a target on the playground, so it wasn't my brother. I probably wouldn't yeah. have got through school. So that's why I looked up to him. And with the boxing, like, I used me getting, like, a target at school, me getting bullied and doctors saying like, I wasn't going to live a normal life. That's, like, the fire and motivation that I used to go on, yeah. I love that. I can relate to that as well because my upbringing was quite similar. My dad was always in and out of prison for a... It was always violent crimes and stuff like that. So it was always just me and yeah, my brother. Yeah, it's affecting you, doesn't it, mate? Of course it does, mate. Of course it does. And when when there's... So is it just you and your brother, yeah? No, there's, there's an... uh, six of us. Well, seven of us, mate. Okay. But, but you and your brother... Well, you and your brother was close, knit. You was the closest. Yeah, because I'm right. I'm 35 now. He'd be like 36 now. So there's a year or 18 months between us. Yeah, that's very similar to me. My, my brother, I think there's a, a bit, bit of a bigger age. I think it's like three and a half years, but yeah. We was really close in that respect because... Uh, but I wouldn't have got through prime school probably problem. without him. Oh, I love that. Like, because the way, like, I used to get targeted every school I went to because I was, like, basically, I was a little fit yeah. mate growing up in primary school. Yeah. Certainly wasn't when you got in the ring, though. Like you said, it was but, all about war, weren't it? As soon as I got old enough, mate, like, to, like, to, like, when I've obviously got into boxing and that gave me a bit of confidence. Um, yeah. But once I got, like, so yeah, seven, even though I was tiny, mate, I was, couldn't be asked anymore. Like, if, you, if you're going to hit me, hit me. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to back me, back me, do it. Yeah, it's fucking it time that's to like, back at that point, isn't it? Yeah, as like, once you've been bullied enough, you just don't care anymore, do you? Yeah, that's it, that's it. But in the yeah. ring, I just that's I just wanted to fight, and that was my mistake, because I didn't, I've didn't. i got a good boxing brain. If you, Even on my training footage, I'm, like my footwork and my hand speed, and that, it's, I'm a lot slicker than like I ever boxed in my fights, do you know what I mean? Because I just wanted to fight. So, so do you think every time you stepped in the ring, no matter who it was, the... the the game plan and, and everything that you was working on just went out the window and you just wanted to tear up? 
Mark came from what that was it, man? Yeah, just went out the window. Even if Johnny Tarn, right? Johnny Tarn, I, I, I stuck to a game plan. When I boxed him, I kept coming to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
Chris Edwards after that, like after the first fight, and he, like, he, they never got in touch. Yeah. So throughout, obviously, the names that you've boxed are pretty, pretty good, man. So who, who would you say is the toughest? Who, who was the toughest fight that you've had? My hardest fight. Uh, in the way I before, uh, like, is in being a fifty-fifty fight or like what I like the hardest to get through. Um, both. Tell tell me both. Tell well, the both. hardest, to, the two hardest to get through was Charlie Hoy and um, Anthony Nelson. Char- uh-huh. Cause Charlie, Charlie threw punches and punches, mate, and he, he he with bad intentions. If it uh-huh. wasn't for boxing politics, like he'd he'd been a big name one a lot in this country. Uh-huh. But um, he was a like he was a top, he was a serious operator. That was on Box Nation. That as we did four, six rounds. I can't remember now, but he was on me like a rational from the round, like the first so, round. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember his dad shouting during one of the rounds, "Don't let this little prick enter the fight." Because once I got into the fight, it was like it was a, it was a fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't box terrible on that. It was a decent fight, but he did win. Um, that was hard to get through because almost pressure he did. And the other one was, I I really was unfit. Was Anthony Nelson in? Where was it at? It was in the North East somewhere. He trained, he was under Mal Gates, wasn't he? Um, yeah. like Anthony Nelson jumped on me from the first second, mate. And he didn't let, like, normally when people come, not every one of my opponents, especially like the first 15, the top right, that were the good kids, they used to come at me in the first 30 seconds, like, let the hands go, realize they weren't going to budge me. And then, like, I did them back once or twice, and no, like, I could hurt them. So they'd like, box me, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Anthony yeah. Nelson, he like, jumped on me and he didn't let me breathe for the full fight. That, like that was good tactic from him because I'm a cold, uh, slow starter. Me, it takes me about two rounds again to the fight. But it was rather good tactic from Mal Gates. Me or my ex coach, who would just split from at the time, was good coach uh, mates with Mal. So could like could he have inside him? I don't know. But they're the two hards to get through. We had this fight that I thought was a good fifty fifties. Rather Kevin Satchel, um, Kevin Satchel. I'd say Kevin Satchel. Be honest, a standout one. The yeah, especially, if, yeah, especially yeah. if you pick your nicks up. If, well, if it's fight of the year, that's why I was trying to find it. If we got, we're so we've got fight in the night for it, mate, on the Liberal Olympia. Like, and do you meant to get extra money? Don't you get uh, fight of the night? Uh, yeah, yeah. You meant to get that extra money? I, had to, I don't know, you didn't see none of that. I fucking bet you didn't. I didn't, mate. I didn't see none of that, so I don't know what happened to that. So how many times did you box in the North East? Once. Not twice. Yeah. I had one arm show, which I knocked a lad out in about 90 seconds. I had him down three times in a time as well. And against Kevin Cogner, was that rating in medals, I think? Or somewhere like, is, where's that Spennymore? Yeah, yeah Spennymore, yeah. I think it was that there, mate, um, which I know for a fact I won as well. The first round was that one side, it should have been a tie. Yeah. yeah there were only two times who, of boxing in the North East, apart from that, who, like my who, debut. Who, who was the kid that you had down and you lost the fight by a round? I think you lost it by a point. Usman you, Muhammad in the rematch. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was the one. That's the one that I felt you like really, really strong. Even the last in the papers, mate. In the, like um, Jenna sent me about a week after that fight uh, from Leicester. It was in their papers saying Fras- Francis Cross was fast and ferocious from start to finish. He was unlucky not to walk with the win. Yeah, the, this is the nasty side of boxing that people don't see. They don't and I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure that night, looking at box wreck, if it, you'll have to go and have a look. Some the referee didn't score it. It's got another name who scored the fight, and then there's a right name for the referee. So why why didn't the referee score it? Well, that night when I boxed Usman. Yeah, apparently I think that I'm sure that. Don't quote me on that, but have a look. I'm sure that's what it says. Well, it tells you how corrupt boxing is, though, doesn't it? Because yeah, of course, mate, that's what I'm saying. People don't see that side of it. It's let's be honest. Rude. When I'm going up against someone like Usman Ahmed, there's a big name, or like Kevin Satchel or Paul, but uh, like. What, even if I do deserve to win that fight, I'm coming by myself, right? I'm a way fighter. These are the ones who are selling tickets, who are putting money into boxing. I'm taking out a boxing. Like, how am I going to, they're not going to let me it. win that fight. I know, yeah. What, what, what's the highest purse you received? My highest purse, the South Teru is my 35 fights. I think my highest purse was against the rematch against, no, the first fight against Uthman Hamid on Sky when Jason Booth boxed on it. Mm. He stopped someone. It was a, that was a nice person. I think I walked away after after paying like everyone off. I think yeah. I might have pocketed two, between two and a half to three grand. That was my highest purse. Wow. Like, that's how bad the boxing money is made. That's, yeah, hey, I had no choice to fight so often. Yeah. Yeah. Pe- like, the, pe- purse is, 
that, that, that was my job. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't working outside of boxing. Like, I was, that was my job. Of course, man. This is what I mean. Let's talk about road warriors and how important they are, how important you was to the circuit. Well, they're underestimating me and they're written off because they were journeymen. And what happens is all these shows that run since like TV media come into boxing, um, like Eddie Air not, and the dead bring journeymen over that are going to make their fighter look like an absolute superstar who's going to get banged yeah, out. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? They're not yeah. a journeyman who's rigidly named for a warrior who's willing to fight anyone anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, change the girl, won all his titles on the road. Yeah. That's that's yeah, a road look warrior. At, look at Usyk now. He's travelled the world. Yeah, to, exactly. To, Alexander to... Usyk, Lomachenko, <laughs> the won titles on the road. That's a world like that's a road warrior. One yeah, of my favourite yeah. road warriors is Jamie McDonnell. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's a he, world yeah. champion, but he's he, right. constantly fighting on the road. Yeah. Like it's unbelievable. unbelievable fighting mate. So what what you do what you doing at the minute like work wise and stuff like that because you're not you're not boxing anymore are you mate? I'm doing support work at the minute with, with you so it's like art, like nice. learning disabilities or autism and challenging behaviour. Nice one. I've been, I've been doing that on and off for about twelve years, but mainly it's like, stuck to boxing. Do you know what I mean? So I put it to one side. But that's what I'm doing yeah. at the minute. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you enjoy it? Yeah. I don't. It, it's a rewarding job because the way I look at it, these are kids that like. They remind me of myself when I was younger, they don't have a voice. They yeah. really need someone to stand up for them and speak for them. So that's why I can relate to them and I get along with them a lot more than some staff do because some staff just seem as kids and they don't understand where they come from, what like, type of problem they've got, do you know what I mean? Probably, yeah, of course, man. You have, you so, have to, sorry, go on. No, go on, man. You have to, in my opinion, with, when you this type of job, with, like you have to find their passion and like that's your win, do you know what I mean, to win the trust. Of course it is, man. So, win the trust, mate, they'll open up to you and listen to you. That's it. Do you have your own little family and stuff now? I have um, three kids. Me, I've t- uh, I don't know, twin boys and a, a ten-year-old boy. Oh, nice one. So, are you oh. looking to get back involved in boxing? Mm-hmm. Oh, but, but have your lads thought about it? I'd love to get back involved in boxing. It's a British boxing board that won't let me come back. Like, because I was taking hard fights on the road or um. They'll call me and I kept saying, Listen, do you ever see me getting put down? I'm not getting hurt. I'm trying to talk to kids, like they're saying, But yeah, I'm winning rounds. I said, That's like that's, that's out of my hands. You know what I mean? I am winning rounds, but it's not my fault. I can't, they're not giving me them. This is politics. Do you think, do you think I know, do you think it was favouritism? Because you don't get a lot of uh, there's not a lot coming out of the North East, especially road warriors. Do you think it was because of the area you was from? You were just so uh, yeah, one million percent made. It's even Carl Grew said to me, like, the North East boys. It's, it? it's the strictest in the world company, apparently, mate. Yeah. The North East. But, like, they have never had a fight. Like, this town is Middlesbrough. I'm probably the first, like, put a road boy to come out of this town. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's what I'm on the road. No one else has come from this town. Yeah, I, was, yeah, I was just about to say that. No one would have. They haven't seen that before from this town. Do you want me to be taking fights on the road and being able to deal with it? And, like, knock it. I'm not, I wasn't getting hit, mate. I wasn't getting put down. I was getting. Yeah. Jen Dayway, if I was doing a bad job and getting hurt and looking terrible, I wouldn't be getting called up to Terence Crawford's on the card and get Ricky really Baird in the world title. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I wouldn't have oh, been yeah. on Hatton TV or Sky Sports. I wouldn't have been on Eurosport. Yeah, you wouldn't have been giving them opportunities. You get called on the big shows, mate, against good fighters because you don't know you're going to be able to put, like, test their kid. And, and like, it. you're worth going on Sky. That's why out in all my fights, like, on Sky Sports, I was always the floater if I wasn't on. Yeah. So have you not thought about coaching or anything like that? Yeah, but there's that. This this is a small town, mate. And Joe you know is like, if I come from a yeah, different loca- town, yeah, I, location, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I come from a different town, mate, I'd have done well in boxing because the fans of the got behind you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where this is like, uh, people want you to do well, but not better than them in this town. Mm. They're like, if I had won the British title, they'd have all been my best mate and like come. Do you know what I mean? But until yeah, we got there, you're on your own. And there's that much competition in this town with boxing gyms and coaches. Like I'd need to full set up to myself my own gym and stuff like that to like even be competitive. Yeah, it's a lot of hard work, isn't it? Yeah, Especially but I, I would love to coach though, because I know for a fact my boxing I've got an eye boxing brain where I could coach someone to a title level in pro or amateur. I know I could. You you should, man. You should. It'd be a, it'd be a shame to I waste your knowledge. My brain was better. Than, my brain was better like than what my body would let me perform. Yeah. Like I've got asthma and stuff. Like and my body wouldn't let me perform. Then. That's no excuse to be honest with you, but whatsoever, I'm not trying to make an excuse there. But my brain's a lot better than my, uh, my body. Yeah. Well, hopefully, you'll be back in boxing soon, Francis. 
But um, let's move on now. We'll talk a couple of other topics. Over the last month, we've yeah, over the last month we've um, we've seen a featherweight division in the ever moving cycle that it is. We've seen Lee Wood get the win against Lara after all the weight dramatics, and um, we've seen Michael Conlon get stopped off Luis Alberto Lopez and Josh Warrington waiting in the wings. We've we've discussed this on Twitter. Yeah, we have. Where, yeah. Where where do you think it it all stands and the dynamics of it now? How how do you see it playing out? Do you know what I think it's a it's an unbelievable time of February at the minute, especially in Britain, because you make yeah. some big, big fights. Um, I think one name that no one likes to mention or does mention is, is for me, is possibly the like the dark horse in the division and the artists want to take out is Rob C. Ramirez. I think he could yeah. be legitimately number one. Yeah, he fights, if he, does he fight this weekend or next weekend? He fights this weekend in Japan, mate. Um, Japan, yeah. He's it. a class act. He's a two-time Olympic yeah. champion. Yeah. Seeing him over there, he boxed over there on, on a film show. It was a matchroom show, if, if I'm not mistaken. And he, he looked good then as well. Mate, but he's, he, he's a two-time um, Olympic medalist, isn't he? Two-time Olympic gold medalist, mate. And I'm pretty sure, I know at least one of them, I'm pretty sure it could be both. Like he got um, fighter of the Olympics in, in it as well. Like he well, really is a he's a class act, mate. Like a proper yeah, class act. Yeah, 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 no, he's I, I, he's I like a him. nightmare for anyone in that division. Anyone. I, th- I think he's, that's why. I think that's why they because they're both with top rank as well. And um, my mate at International Boxing News, he interviewed the top rank CEO on the night, and he said that's the f- after Rubisa fights in Japan gets through that. That's the fight that they're looking to make at the end of the year. And stylistically, the way that Lopez fights, it's shades and Nas. He, he he punches you from angles and and it's unreal. It, it, it's unreal the way he fights. He's like Lopez, a... he's he's one. He's hard to put your finger on, isn't he? Like he's it, one it, where you look at him, you think, Joe, you know what? You should be easy to beat him, but he's not. You don't know what he's going to do. He steps out to the left and hand he's side. He's power, mate. He'll be he'll throw a left hook at you, but he'll be moving in the air and moving his head at the same time. But you know what? Back in towards my... it. When the way I, when I've watched them both and I've watched Ramirez since the uh, obviously Ramirez since the amateurs, Lopez yeah. like obviously in the pro game. Um, I think it's a fight where Robbie Ramirez could look a million dollars in. Yeah, I think if he gets his style right, because if this, he gets his tactics right, mate, he could make that fight look easy. What, what everyone's forgetting, Lopez looked terrific against Conlon. Maybe Conlon didn't have the correct preparation after the Lee Wood. Fight because oh, obviously he blitzed that Guerfi in a round, didn't he? And he boxed someone else. Can't remember who it was, but it worked for long. But this is this I'll... is that Lopez. The second the second half of the Josh Warrington fight, he lost that clearly. That was a very very close fight by the end, and Josh was just a bit wary in the first half because of his broken jaw and his broken hand. But he finished stronger. If he, if you can start strongly against that Lopez, and you can and you can hound him down, you and yeah, you can. Down. You can grind him down. Yeah, he'll complain to the referee every opportunity he got against Josh. He knew he, he knew that Josh had a reputation, and he and he used it against him. And he was crying like a bitch every two minutes. I was ringside. Josh lost the second half of that fight. Sure, where was... is that? Truthfully, he's a they, a lot of these Mexicans, right? The bullies. You know what I mean? The bullies don't like it rough back. And as soon as yeah. they get rough back, they start complaining. Do you know what I mean? They don't, they're not used to it. Josh did. I thought that could, fight could have possibly been a draw. Well, a, a, one, one. Uh, well, I on the night I scored it. A round up to Lopez, and then when I watched it back, I think I scored it a draw. And I told Josh this, but I was in the I was in Josh's dressing room after the fight, and um, that Lopez has come in, and he was complain he complained. I think it was in the seventh round or something like that about it being it in the leg, and then he was a boxing straight after it, doing all the, all this like he's um he's not his showboating, but his his body language was like as if he knew he was winning the fight, and he's going pa pa pa, and he's moving backwards as Josh is trying to grind him, grind him down. So he's coming to the changing room after the fight to um shake hands and be all nice as you do. Comes through and he's limping and he's trying to limp. I've got osteoarthritis in my knee, so I know a limp when I see one. And we, yeah. were sat with Lee, we were sat with Leeds United captain Liam Cooper that night, and he knows as well. I told him, I said, Coops, I said, you're a footballer, you know about leg injuries, etc." I said, that daft bastard was walking on on, on his... On, he was put, putting, put, yeah, he was putting it on his heavy foot. I was thinking, what's he doing? Just blagged his way through it. But that was to get out of a drug test. That that was to get out of a drug test. So, but leading up to... The um the fight with Conlon, my mate told him. My mate was there as well, and he t- he told the Conlon. He said, "Make sure he doesn't wriggle out of Ardo because he'll try and do it." And they said there was a big kerfuffle leading up to it, um, and he was trying to worm his way out of it. But that's another thing you need to be careful with with them foreign fighters. Everyone's on the juice over there, man, and they think they I'm can get away. Now, with it. Mate, any Mexican world, I, I I pretty much guarantee you now, 
I'd, I'd happily say 10, but I'd go for 9 out of 10 wet mixing world championship on juice. Oh, yeah, well, look at Canelo. He got, he, he got a ban for it, and it's, it, there's no Jim, secret. Do you know what I mean? He's notorious for it, mate. It's full That's gym. it. That's notorious. it. Like, Canelo's juiced up to death. Of course he is. Of course he is. You don't, he's go man, for, he's, you don't go he's from going, being a junior featherweight to a light heavyweight, knocking people out of light heavyweight without being on something. And, and he's got muscles on these muscles. I know, yeah. what, do you know what I mean? Like he's taking shots against monster punches, like Kovalev and that, and they're just bouncing off him. I know. It's just that reminds me of people are forgetting, right? Canelo's knocking Kovalev out. Kovalev was a serious fighter and went toe to toe with Andre Ward and probably should have won one of them. Well, that put they say if Canelo boxed Kovalev when Ward boxed him, he wouldn't have made a distance. I don't nah, think. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. What do you think? Yeah. Kovalev was an animal, mate. Yeah, he is. He's an absolute animal. He, he yeah. receives it and he wanted to hurt you, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He had he, he were bad intentions. I remember when he come over in, white Tony blew out. Like Peter thought Blue was gonna have a chance. No, Kovalev was a monster. That, that was yeah. bad matchmaking. Yeah, so before we drift off the featherweights. <laughs> um, I know before going back to the featherweights, but I've joked against um I thought Jamie Collin to be honest, yeah. Or Michael isn't Michael the younger one. Mike Michael. Yeah, Jamie's won our box, isn't he? Yeah, Michael yeah, Connor, yeah. the younger one, mate. Ah, John, if he could have stuck to that game plan for the first two rounds, he'd have pissed off, right? Yeah, because he, he won the he won the first two rounds, and off. He pissed he did well. He, jumped, he made it look easy. He's box, boxing. His boxing, his technique was he's, he's yeah. beautiful. Watch when he's like yeah. that, but his his heart is bigger than his head. Yeah, yeah. He wants That's to have a it. macho. Do you know what I mean? He's got a Mexican in front of him. He wants to have a beat a Mexican up Mexican. He got banged out because of it. I want him to have three or four fights now and get back to world title contention properly. Not have it he is, he, like, People underestimate him because he is world level, isn't he? Yeah, of course he is. Do you know what I mean? He's world level. He's getting beat by is, world level fighters. But what he needs to learn from me is that he's a brilliant boxer. He could do 12 rounds if he uses his head and to be but, dis- his discipline. But for me, he doesn't have this, the engine or the stamina to do a 12 round dogfight. Do you not think it's a super bantam weight, though? What do you reckon? It should go down. Yes, I think naturally, yeah, because he might have, if if he boxed Lee Wood at super bantam weight, he might have had that little bit more killer instinct. He should have finished that fight off. Let, let, obviously, it was a rocky fight in the end, with all credit to Lee Wood, but that was con- Lee Wood didn't know where he was in the first two rounds. I know. That was con- that, do you know I, what I mean? It was one of the. Well, I thought it was going to be over after two rounds. I did, mate. I did. Do I, mean, was, I thought, con- with, I thought with, after with, that, like he's going to run through him. We've seen but, we've seen it stopped for less. Lee Woods, he's an animal, isn't he? He is, he is. Mate, he's, men- you know what he reminds me of? He's, he's like a car frost. Yeah, he is too right, he is. It's them, it's them from Nottingham, it's something in the blood. I'm telling you, that, there the is something in the water down there. One, oh, one two, 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 two right there is. I was there when he got knocked out off Lara, and to, to, to that mentality to go straight back into the rematch is, is absolutely It's a monster else. mentality, mate. Yeah, it's a monster mentality. People right. don't realise if you are, don't get me wrong, I've never been cleaned out, but people don't realise if you're getting knocked out, how scary it is to go back yeah. in that room. Yeah, of course it's it is. Mentally, this is what, it's this is, a this, demon. This is what I'm saying about Lee and Josh Warrington now. They've both secured the legacies, them two, with a Frampton win, Baby Damn, Selby. Yeah, 100%. Wood with a Conlon fight and doing this with Lara now, that's the legacy set. There's 34 and 33, respectively. Let, let them cash out now. They've only got two or three camps left. Let them cash but, out. They deserve it for me. They, that, they do, of course they do, and there's no and better dance partner it, to do imagine it. Imagine the atmosphere between them. Oh, wow, imagine it. The atmosphere would be electric, mate, between oh, Car, um, me. Lee Woods fans that, and uh, Carl Fran- <laughs> Finney's fans, Josh Warrington's fans. Yeah, that, 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 I was there for Frampton and, and Warrington as well, and that was that was an unreal night. The Selby the atmosphere fight, between that, them, it was, it was electric, wasn't it? Yeah, the, and, the, and obviously the Nottingham fans, they all come down to Manchester for the for the second well, fight, the first fight, that was electric as well. well it needs to happen, that fight, man. That'll, like that's that, the British that, look that we need now. That that's the, I know we've we've had Kel Brook and Amir Khan, but this has sort of come from nowhere within the last within the last two years. And, this, and for me, mate, to be honest, yeah, Lee where, Wood and Josh White and Marlon and Pramlin and all that. Yeah, I th- I, yeah. They've got more uh, left. I th- yeah, of course. Yeah, I think if you look at the way Josh, especially the way Josh finished the, the second half of that Lopez fight, and that Lopez is, is now considered one of the best in the world, and Josh still needs all the credit. He's ranked number one with the WBC. If obviously if Eddie can sort out this um, this Kolmatov situation with the WBA, because I was told that it was sorted, um, then it'll be on for the summer. At the I've I followed Josh Warrington since probably when he boxed Chris Riley. Yeah, mate. He was. He, 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 got top, he, 
and that you. joke is me. I knew it was going to go. I, I predicted right, and I had a, a debate with a few people on Twitter that when you box Selby and um, Frampton, I, I knew Frampton. he'd beat him because I knew he'd have too yeah. much ferocity for yeah, yeah, yeah. him and too much work. He'd grind them both down. Do you know what I mean? The, the guys are animals. That debate me and you had, like, cause, well, I didn't. I only watched the Lotus fight about a few weeks ago, on YouTube. Yeah. And I, I gave him a draw, and I, but before that, the last time I seen, him, I think it was when he got, did he get injured? He brought a jaw something and stopped. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I just, I just thought to myself, is because the way he fights, and how much of a warrior he is, he likes to fight with like with a, a war. That's is why he, he was starting to get punchy. Yeah. Well, Do you know the, what I mean? Well, yeah, but yeah, that's why he was wary first half of the fight, but the second half of the fight in that for Lopez, it. He, he, he was unbelievable. I just think he should have started doing that earlier because I, it, I think what it was in the earlier rounds as well, Lopez weren't doing much, but Josh weren't doing fuck all either and he knows that. It's inner confidence as well though, isn't it? Of course it is. He was wary you know about I mean? it. But, you, but with, Josh, though, though, mate. With, with Josh though, he's been with Steve, my boss Steve Wood, the head of VIP. He's been with Steve since the very start. He, they always got told you'll never make it to English level. You'll always be a road warrior. You'll be a journeyman. You and your dad won't do fuck all. You'll never sell a ticket. He well, couldn't, sell t- he could, couldn't sell tickets at first. Then he got an English champion. Then he got British champion. And now he's one of the f- top five t- ticket sellers in the country. Without a shadow of a doubt. Him and Lee and Woodard. And his fans that, are that, the no, best. That's, that's the fact. And that his fans are, are the best. That's why. His fans are electric, mate. That, Josh Wharton fans are electric. We need this. This stadium. I tell you what, if if Lee Wood were uh, Josh Wharton happens, I'm going to that one million percent. Oh, a million percent, yeah, that'll be. Well, that, for me, that in that division, I'd like to see. I'd, I would like to see Juan Lopez fight um, the the other Mexican. That that be an all out war. Well, the, the, there was talk of Lara and Lopez as well because they were born or they live 15 miles away from each other or some shit. Like that'd that. be an absolute war, I mean, it was print money. <laughs> But I know we talk. I know that's another thing with that Lara. I know we talk about weight bullies, and obviously everybody takes a lot of weight off, so they can feel that they've got they've, 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 they can bang harder. That's the whole point in it. That Lara is a weight bully. It, it took him. I think he. I think he didn't make weight for featherweight for three years. Up until, he, up, up until he boxed Josh. But apparently, a match made told, told, told me last week that the WBA used to have a rule or one of them had a rule that you can make so much weight before it or some shit like that and it's ended up backfiring on on, on him anyway but he's, he's he's not even a featherweight that Lara is a super featherweight he just wants to be a featherweight because he knows he can whack but he's, yeah, he, 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 he knows he can whack him. it has a detrimental effect on your health do you know what I mean just be a super featherweight it's not that's well, not exactly long term it's not going to be any good in his kidneys or his liver isn't that do you know what I mean no, grind, exactly. grind his body right the way down just so he can have easier fights I know. He'd be better long term and healthy for his career if he goes up to Super Featherweight, right? Without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, too. And right. then, then fights where you can grind him down. You might not be able to grind him down when he goes up with. Well, if he moves up to Super Featherweight, there's, there's fights like Joe Cardina and stuff up there. There's some monster fights for him up there. Oh, it did. That that division's waiting to blow up as well. To be fair, Joe Cardina is a class act. Yeah, he is. He's, he's a class he's, act, mate. Yeah. He's, he'll be a real player in that division. He's not going to be easy to beat. I think obviously Tyson doesn't fight enough and he's just taking the piss out of everyone at the minute. But there's Tyson, Sonny Edwards, and Joe, Carf- Joe Cardina as the top three British boxers for me at the minute. Yeah, I couldn't argue much with that, to be honest. With you. I definitely Sonny Edwards is number two. I have Tyson number one, even though he's taking the piss to him. Of course, like. He doesn't fight he's enough, doesn't. does it? Uh, other way, every, 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 every other division, look, we're seeing the likes of Spence Crawford and Inouye in Fulton being made and all the light heavyweights fighting. And the heavyweight division, it's slow. It's because it's the big glamour division, the big money. It's the most money involved. So the they're waiting and waiting. waiting, waiting you know what I mean? They're all chasing the bag too much. They're all chasing and, the paper too much. We chase the legacy first and the paper comes. I know, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, I, would, it, I would much be fair, right? To, to get them all in the ring, does it really take that much bank? Jesus, they're all it should have done. Then what if you if I'm like for me and in my opinion Tyson Fury is a real fighting man. Do you know what I mean? So surely he would want the more the legacy of undisputed and beating Newsack. Then like, do you know what I mean? That. Yeah, you'd expect that because he's a he is a fighting man. Like, he, he, he actually is. Some of them are business. Like for me, I'm saying Josh is a businessman. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um But like, fights like Fury, the fighting men at art, so he should be like, take take the money. Yeah. Well, apparently totally though, agree. what I, I, I did hear that um, Uzek turned down thirty million to fight Fury, and he's taken eight yeah. million to fight Dubai. I heard that as well. Well, he's prized himself out of it, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? So who's who is the player? Everyone's pointing the finger at Fury. How do you know? 
Do you know what I mean? Who's the blame? You don't really know, do you? I know. But they, they go on about Fury not having a fan base and everyone hates him. When I was there for that Chisora fight, the Tottenham Hotspur shop where they sell Tottenham Hotspur merchandise was for the Gypsy King merchandise. And they made like fucking 200, 200 grand or something on the night. They, it was a global it was, it, was, it, yeah, it was packed. It was packed. It's because of how well they do in America and stuff like that. And the, 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 the wilder story. Do you know what made him a superstar, Fury? Because 